Mac OS X Snow Leopard is now available and we give you a look at four of the major features right after this. Okay, so we're going to look at the Finder here in Snow Leopard and uh, just really quick, there's not much that's changed here. Um, but you'll notice a, a new slider here that lets you uh, resize the size of the icons. You can actually go up to 512 uh, pixels wide on these. Um, so that's one change. It's also been rewritten in Coco. It's 64 bit, so it's a lot more responsive. Um, you'll feel um, you'll feel that the finder is a little faster. These icons here will re actually refresh as you move around almost twice as fast as they did in Leopard. And one other change is when you select an, an item. Um, there was quick look which basically you hit the space bar and you can see uh, a preview of that file but if you were to take your focus off you lose the quick look until you come back on so now what they let you do is actually you can preview right in right in the finder so if I uh, make this larger you'll notice that's actually moving um, and so you can actually watch this and loot and leave the finder, go into Welcome another application, edge, uh, as you can see, this is our and uh, that's pretty much it. it is the, uh, so we'll pause that. So that's the finder, new finder, couple new features, more responsive in Snow Leopard. Okay, next thing we're going to look at here in Snow Leopard, um, in our uh, little series of videos, is Stacks. Now, if you uh, if you've been in the user of Leopard, you know Stacks is located here on the bottom right hand side of the dock. And it gives you a quick way to look at um, downloads, documents, or whatever other folders really you put in there. Um, but there have been some improvements to Stacks, um, and we'll just show you those now. First is that you can scroll. So if I pull up uh, Stack, I can, as you can see, you can scroll similar to the Finder. So uh, that's one change there. Um, it really does just look like a reskin Finder. The other thing is that let's see. If we go into downloads, you can actually go into folders. So here I've been downloading a bunch of uh, application updates since Snow Leopard um, has caused a lot of developers to update their apps. So if you click on a folder, as you can see, it stays there in the stack. And uh, you can open that in Finder. You can go back to larger stack, go into another folder. Um, that's not, you couldn't do that before. If you clicked on a folder before, it would just open in Finder. So you can kind of navigate within the stack um, to find... Uh, your content, of course, you can also just hit this to open that stack in the Finder as well, which there it is right there. So um, not not too many changes there, but still, there are changes nonetheless. And uh, Snow Leopard is all about refinements, so um, definitely more of a refinement than a full uh, full blown feature change, but still cool nonetheless. That stacks in Snow Leopard. Okay, next up, we're gonna take a look at the changes that. Um, have occurred in Snow Leopard as it pertains to Expose. So typically, uh, before Expose, um, you basically just press a button on your uh, on your keyboard, and it would show you basically every window that you happen to have open, and we just happen to have open a lot right now um, to give you an example of what's going on. But now they have Doc Expose. So if you hover over the icon, for example, here Safari, I'm going to hold that down, and now it only shows me the Safari windows that I have open, as well as down here at the bottom, the ones that I have minimized to the dock. Um, and if I click that back, it just takes me back to where I was. But if I hold that down again, you can actually get a better, closer look. So if I go like that, hit the space bar, you can actually get a closer look at the window. So you can actually tell what you're looking at. Um, and you can hit the space bar again to minimize it, or you can just hit the space bar once and then move the mouse around and kind of uh, get a look at the different windows. So uh, that's Doc Expose, and we actually think that's a pretty cool new feature. Um, it makes Expose a lot better to use um, than it was previously in older versions of uh, Mac OS X, um, especially because you can just, again, hold, hold something down, get a look at just those windows, um, and even get a closer look like that. Um, never mind. So that's it. There you have it. Expose and Doc Expose, new to Snow. All right, guys. Up next, we're going to take a look at QuickTime X or uh, QuickTime 10. 
um, Apple's referred to it as both, and it's actually pretty interesting because the last version of QuickTime and Leopard was QuickTime 7, so they've actually jumped past 8 and 9 and just gone straight to 10. Um, very interesting, but uh, whatever, no big deal. So let me just launch a video here. Here we have a video, and as you can see, compared to, actually let me launch the older QuickTime as well, QuickTime 7. And let me let me throw that video into QuickTime 7 as well. So here you can see the difference right away. Same video, um, and this actually fits right in there, as you can see, same size. But uh, the new QuickTime X gets rid of a uh, separate bar on top and these controls at the bottom because it instead has the bar here and the controls inside. So if I were to press play. So, what are you doing? It's one of the first questions we often ask friends and family. Now, as you can see, when I move my mouse away, those controls go away. Move my mouse back, you get the bar at the top, you get the controls. Move the mouse away, gone. And it's very interesting because it's like almost like a uh, just a video screen within a screen, if you will. Just a floating video. As opposed to this one, where if I press play there, all that stuff stays. So uh, QuickTime X, obviously a little more sleek, a little more slick. Um, you can go full screen with it if you need to, like so. Go back out, make it bigger or smaller. Um, let's open a second video just to show you uh, that it can do that. So there we have another video. We'll hit play there as well. And there you have it. Let me close QuickTime 7 down. Okay, so another thing I want to show you about QuickTime X um, is that you can edit video, um, something that was only available in QuickTime Pro before. So you can edit video here. You see, you just go to the trim menu. Um, this was a QuickTime Pro feature that you have to pay for, but basically similar to the iPhone 3GS. You have a little trim bar at the bottom, um, and you just scrub to the area you want, and you can drag um, the beginning and end, as you can see here. And then if I were to press trim, it would uh, trim that clip and leave me with a shortened version. Um, the other thing you can do is share. You can share it to iTunes, um, which will let it be available to your Apple mobile devices um, and Apple TV. You can also uh, share it with Mobile Me. And um, lastly, you can do it direct to YouTube. So here, if I just put in my YouTube username and password and hit sign in, I can get this video uploaded directly to YouTube uh, right here from QuickTime X. So there it is, QuickTime X, very cool. Um, again, floats on your desktop, it's sleek. I think it looks good. Um, there's also a new uh, icon here in the dock, which some people have been complaining about. Don't really see what the big deal is uh, compared to the older one. Pretty much the same thing. Uh, so there you have it. QuickTime X, new in Snow Leopard.